ask you, all I ask you for is blessings. Just leave me alone, let me think, yeah. Just let me think, Just leave me alone, let me think, yeah. Just let me think, Just leave me alone, let me think, yeah. What it do, YouTube? It's your boy Bossy, and I'm back with another video, man. Today we got another uh compilation on this, but this is something different. I be seeing on TikTok all the time. Um, I be seeing on TikTok all the time. Uh, these like I guess they turn their back and they share a secret of some sort. I don't really know how that shit work, but we're gonna get straight to it. Enough of that pussy little talking shit. We got don't talk just laugh. We're gonna get straight to them motherfuckers. I know there's some I know there's some crazy secrets niggas is gonna be exposed. I just know. When I was a little kid, I lived with my grandmother and they always had roaches. And one day my dad walked in and I was eating a roach. What? Okay. Okay, so my secret You could have kept that shit. Secret is just about every time I'm in an elevator by myself without fail, I'll pretend like I'm opening and closing the doors in yeah. my mind, kind of like the force. Nothing wrong with I'm that. Also making the elevator go up and down using my mind as well. That's my secret. Nothing wrong with that. That's valid. I have commitment issues. Very scared of marriage. I don't trust nobody. I feel like everyone's out for self. Mainly because I grew up a sad n and I seen what's been done to a lot of males. I don't want it done to me. I feel, I feel that, bro. I feel like niggas that be on the sidelines don't want to ever get in the game no more because they just so used to the sidelines, bro. They know how the sidelines operate. They can see this shit perfectly from both sides. But, um, what was I about to say? Goddamn. Oh, bro, I was talking to one of my uh my female friends or whatever like that, bro, and we was having this argument, or it was a conversation with an argument. But she got she, but well, I was like, I don't want to get married, but I, I would rather get if I were to get married, I'd want to get married with no papers. Boy, I look like I was the worst nigga in the world when I said that. Boy, she, <gasps> what are you? What, 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 that's not marriage. I'm like, what's the difference? She hated me. She could and she could not for the life of me tell me what the difference was. Okay, so my secret is, I wish I was tall, dark, and handsome, and as you're about to see, I'm none of those. <laughs> what? I don't even know where to start, <laughs> but I just wish my dad would reach out to me. <sighs> we never had a good relationship. And now we don't really talk, and I wish that he would reach out to me. Because I don't know how to approach the man that hurt me so much growing up. I hope he reaches out to um, you. For the past, like, seven, eight months, I have been in a kind of a dark place. I uh, got comfortable with being uncomfortably alone and I would just kind of get really high to just mask it all so I didn't have to deal with my feelings with my emotions and with that I inadvertently pushed away the best thing that's ever been in my life the person that I've never loved like this before and I honestly don't really know how to deal with that. You can tell he really mean that. Damn. You know what I think it is, bro? I think it's the fact that you think it's too good to be true that you start pushing things away. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga probably would have never thought. Because he said the uncomfortably, uncomfortably, uh, he got comfortable being uncomfortably alone. When you get comfortable with being alone and you finally find somebody, well, I don't know how this feels, but you feel like, I feel like, you know, you finally find somebody, you, you just think it's too good to be true, and then you just try and get back to how you were used to, just being alone, you feel me? So I think he's subconsciously, do, he subconsciously did that, and now he's regretting it, which sucks. At least he knows, though, he's aware of it. That's My secret is that I lie a lot, but not to the people I love, just to complete strangers, because they don't need to know all that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Are you lying right now? I don't really tell nobody this, but uh, when I went to boot camp, my girlfriend, well, it was my girlfriend, she sent me a letter and broke up with me. No. But I ain't crying for nobody in the, uh, in the barracks, but uh, when I went to sleep, I cried myself to sleep. Oh, boy. 
He laughing about it. No, he a real nigga. Yes, sir. Fuck her. Um, my secret is that I have liked guys my entire life, but recently I keep getting crushes on girls and I'm not sure how to flirt. Um, yeah. <laughs> my secret is that I secretly wish that me and my best friend wouldn't have gotten into it and that we could mend our relationship, but I know it's not going to happen. So I'm just better with knowing the things that I know and knowing that her and her family is okay. I respect that. Who holds the secret? We do. I do. And in knowing this, I have chosen to heal with you. What are you talking about? Gifted this opportunity just thinking about my secrets and knowing that I have been revealing some secrets to individuals that I felt was very, very important to me. And one of those individuals that I just felt, I want to make sure you always are protected any way I could. And doing that, I had to let a secret be known to my 18 year old son. And that secret was the why, why? Do you feel a need to not connect with your dad in such a way that is harmonious as we would want it to be? As I thought about it, I felt a need to tell my son the secret because I want to make sure I was being fair to him like I would have loved for generations many times others being fair to me as a child. So as his mom, I let him receive something that was so heavy on me for years, but with the focus of protecting him. So I would keep him away from his granddad in a way because I said, well, I want to make sure that I guide this relationship in a way that I feel that when he become an adult, he can handle himself. But as a child, I want him to know that my dealing with granddad can be very uncomfortable. And that uncomfortableness started at the age of 19. And here I am at 44, just letting my son know at 18, the secret. I know that when it comes to mental health, Baby, what you, what are you talking about? it can be very overwhelming. And that's the reason why I share with you all lovingly that secret that I am now expressing healing in this present moment, because when it comes to the choice, I have chosen to heal in all areas of my life as best as I can. I was in a scenario where my dad, truth, he had just experienced being incarcerated for, I think it was like 10 years of my life, yes, because I was nine, and he's coming home newly, and I'm happy because my dad knew about something that occurred when I was 17, when my mom just passed, I experienced a and so in that, my dad was that I would have protected you. So I'm trusting my dad and sharing information with him because I want to be stronger when it comes to being the creator that I am, be comfortable with myself. So when my dad come, I'm like trusting that we drinking. And in that trusting him examining his own child's body, he touched it. I withdrew and I stopped him. And I'm very grateful that I was able to. But then I also took on trust, you trust and look what happened. So in sharing that with my son, and I share this with you all, the gratitude of knowing that my why is an honor to be present as I am. Because I know that mental healing is something that I'm gifted because I choose to accept it. So as I continue to heal, I am honored to share this secret, which is now my healing. And I will continue to accept my healing because it is a gift to the world. I heal with you. When I was about six, I shaved my eyebrows off because a girl at my school had nice thin eyebrows and I wanted them too. But I ended up shaving off my whole eyebrow and I told my mom that my sister did it when I was sleeping and my sister got her ass beat. My mom still thinks she did that to this day. I wanna see what her eyebrows look like now. 
I told everyone that that speaker was broken at work, but it was not. I just wanted it. And everyone gives me trash. So if I say something is trash, then they give it to me. And so that's what happened to the speaker at my job. Smart man. Okay, so when I was younger, I used to have a major anger issue. Like I had no control over it whatsoever. So I used to have this boyfriend pillow. Uh, it was basically like a pillow with just one arm bent. So it's like, think if, if you're wrapping your arm around someone's shoulder, that's how the pillow was shaped. And I would take my frustration out on this pillow by grabbing an actual knife and shanking it over and over again. I don't know too many red flags, but that gotta be one. Let's just say that pillow did not last a while. That gotta be a red flag, cause what the fuck? I was once diagnosed with a mental disease that no one thought was curable. I'm perfectly fine today, but I've kept this a secret since there's such a stigma and I would be treated completely different if I were to ever reveal that publicly. What was it? I wanna know what it is. Why didn't you just say what it was? I blame myself for my best friend's death. Mm -mm. That's it. That's a, that's a big burden to put on your shoulders. I, I hope, I, want, I kinda wanna know more details before I speak on that, but that, that's crazy. For you to blame someone's death on you? That's, yeah. Best friends, too. <laughs> I actually think birds aren't real. I'm pretty sure they're drones. I think they charge on power lines. Like, you would never touch a power line, right? I personally have never seen a baby pigeon because I don't think there are baby pigeons. I think there's just, you know, they don't grow. I don't think birds migrate. I think that uh, they take them away and they, they uh, bring in the next model kind of a thing. <laughs> That's the truth. You're in the city, right? And you see all these uh, houses, right, where people live. You see just as many birds as you see people, but you don't see a single nest. What's up with that? The, the scary thing about the theory is like obviously seagulls, they have beach patrol, right? They're watching the beaches. Uh, the pigeons watch the cities. Owls are for night, you know, night surveillance. But then we have other birds that we have no idea what the government's using them for. Like the flamingos, you know what I mean? What in the world would the government <laughs> need with a flamingo or an owl? You're right, nigga. Penguin? What yeah, would they, they need them for? After world surveillance. This nigga really said, he really stood there and said that with a leather jacket on. All right. I'm go I'm on the air. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's this is a a complicated and bad memory of way back in the 50s when I was uh, um, in my early 20s, and back in those days they didn't have birth control or anything like that, and I was living in Greenwich Village in New York, and me and my friends were would get pregnant all the time, so we had a, we had a what? <laughs> Susan. Huh? What the fuck she just said? I was living in Greenwich Village in New York. And me and my friends were would get pregnant all the time. So we had a, we had a, a place to go to up in Harlem. And we went to this guy and we got abortions quite frequently. And uh, it lasted for, I don't know, a couple of years, I guess. And then I moved on. But that was my embarrassing moment in my life. My seat. First to fuck off. <laughs> Getting pregnant for fun. I don't understand how that's. I mean, you got friends. It's like a group thing. Like, we need to know more about that. Like, what was y'all? How did this? How did y'all handle the situations to get there? And who is this random nigga that just had consecutive part? Like, he didn't give you a talk. Like, hey, I don't think you should be. It's your third one. <laughs> I don't know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need, I need more information, Susan. My secret is that I grew up in a really religious household and was very s**tly <laughs> repressed for my whole childhood. So um, when I first had sex when I was 23 years old, and it was extremely painful because I had um, a condition called vaginismus, which is where psychologically your body tenses up the muscles, and it took me months to work through it to actually be able to have sex normally. Sex is hard for a lot of women, and I think vaginismus is probably more common than I even have thought that it is. But we just don't talk about women's sexuality a lot. So I think for anybody that is struggling with these issues, seeing a therapist is really, really helpful. That's something that I did that helped me a lot. 
You know, I always wondered. First of all, I don't like how pointy her hoodie is. But you know, I always wondered: Do therapists have therapists? Because I'm pretty sure hearing all these niggas' problems would fuck you up subconsciously or mentally. So do they have a therapist they didn't go to? I'm pretty sure they do. My secret is that anytime I get mad uh, at my ex-husband and the woman that he slept with when we were married, I go and egg her car, and I do it a lot. Lock this bitch up. Because cause something tells me she still gets mad, and she still eggs that bitch car. And them niggas sitting there like, who the fuck is egging my car? Because you can tell she did it more than like two times. She might have did it maybe three or four. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment down below. Smash the like button. And let me know what I should react to next. Subscribe to the channel. Link to the original video is going to be at the top of the description. Shot to share secret on TikTok. Make sure you uh, follow them boys over there. Or women. Or people. Group. I know I'm not wasting my time. I know I ain't crossing the line. I know we push gonna shove when shit the fan. You gon' stand on the dime. I don't smash my own post. And I then I'm always gon' ghost. If I'm sick and you fake like so, I'm hot like fire. Come close my rope. I know you bitch. I know you a op. I know you fool.